Okay, hello everyone once again. My name is Abdel Rahim Jabate. As you can see, <coughs> um, I'm in my African identity today. So today we're going to be talking about something that um, we all need to talk about on a daily basis. Because I feel like um, if you start talking about whatever you face, then you're going to find a solution to how you can address it in a different way. Uh, but um, I'm here today with this uh, beautiful lady, this African. Uh, she, she got everything within her, so you're going to know about it as the interview go for a little bit. Today, we're going to go a little deep and talk about what is identity first and what is our identity as an African, even though we live outside of Africa. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to start by... Um, letting you introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I know her as Key Mama, and that's the name everybody knows. So I'm going to let her introduce herself, uh, and okay. then from there, we're going to continue with our discussion today. It's just a dialogue about what we're supposed to be doing and how we should address when it comes to our identity and how we should, people should, uh, because everything starts with you. So I'm going to let my guest introduce herself Listen very carefully to our beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, hello, viewers and listeners. Thank you very much. My name is Catherine Kujo, popularly called Key Mama. Um, the little I can say about myself, I don't like you know saying too much. Um, I run a, a radio show called Key Mama Show also have a foundation called Key Mama Foundation. Yes. So the Key Mama is the brand. Remember that. I do. Uh, I also uh, lead the National Ghana Parade Council that we organize the Ghana Festival right. annually in New York City. Also, uh, I belong to an organization called Progressive Alliance Movement that um, we lead um, Ghanaians in the diaspora. So that's our um, major project that we are working on. This, as you know, Ghana election is around the corner. And uh, next week, God willing, we'll be able to talk about it, why we haven't been able to vote. So a little that I can say to myself, I'm so thankful and grateful that finally I've been able to come to the Afro TV and we come a long way. So thank you very much. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a honor to have you here to talk to us about like what we experience in the, in the diaspora and we all know exactly how it feels to be uh, kind of um, a minority in any society. So we are, and um, thank God to the, um, to the immigration law that was passed uh, back in the 60s that gave birth to most Africans to be able to come here and live in the worst. Uh, this, this, this was done through, or it went through a long time for people to be able to come over here, but because it was discrimination first. So now, <clears throat> the identity crisis we're gonna talk about today, uh, we all know, um, we all face it, even uh, our, our, our children that come over here and most of them that was born over here or some that, that come, they face it uh, at school, in public places, in, in, in whatever they do. But at the end of the day, I feel like we don't, we don't really, before we come over here, we don't talk about those issues. We don't really uh, maybe have a dialogue about what is it and what you should expect. Uh, we just feel like, okay, we go into the land of opportunity and let's just go and just explore it. That's but uh, sometimes we, we kind of forget to, about uh, some of the, wherever you move, wherever you migrate from one place to another place, there's something that you, you take along with you, which is your identity. So <clears throat> we, this is a dialogue, it's a, it's a, we're having a conversation. So if you're out mm -hmm. there too and you got anything to say, um, we will definitely... Um, be looking at our, our social media and, and read some comments to those who uh, you can define it in your own way, tell all exactly what is cultural identity mm -hmm. and what is identity 
crisis what do you want it, when you when, it, when you hear that word worry it comes to your mind so um uh key mama when it comes to a identity crisis we all know how we face it uh what do you think what do you think um we we so we live in a globalization time now where everything is just in one you can live anywhere and know about everything and where you are and also the technology to just explore everything so in between in between technology and, and globalization what what impact is it playing on uh, on uh, identity uh, crisis or issues okay. issues yeah. uh, identity crisis or issue is very broad like you said mm. it can be a religious you know your sexual orientation mm. also your gender your disability all this play a role mm. But thank God, uh, with the technology and especially us in abroad, mm. so our brothers and sisters back home are now having easy access to, like you know, on your fingertips you can Google, right. or you can go to Google and say, "Hey, send me to New York or the Bronx," and you know what is going on. Right. But uh, in reality, mm -hmm. in reality, I'll put myself out here mm. as a mother, you know. I'll mention how many children I have, but as a mother, mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> coming here mm. as a first generation right. to the U.S., I faced it myself, right. and uh, I know definitely you also uh, did. Mm. But uh, it depends; everybody handle it, you know, differently. Right. Some people have a hard time adjusting to the environment mm -hmm. because one. When you first enter here, you have a huge accent. Right. Your language. Right. Because the way you pronounce it, things uh, back home and uh, over here are different. So imagine, like you said, we weren't prepared. All we know is we're going to seek for greener pastures. Right. So that is the main focus. Mm. Whether the people wear long dress, short dress, long, we don't search for anything. Right. We're just coming for the green. Mm -hmm. Then when we get here, then hey, we have a culture shock. Right. Oh my gosh, what am I into? Mm -hmm. But anyway, thank God you're here. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the language barrier right. become a challenge. Mm -hmm. Because your accent is very heavy. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago when I started working, I pronounced certain things, you know. Mm. They'll be making fun of me. But like I said, right. some people may take it the hard way mm -hmm. and be offended. Mm -hmm. Some other people also might take it in, uh, in, mm. a, in a, a learning process. So, for example, I use myself. I told them right away. Mm. I'll let them know that I have an accent. I, I understand you. They also have an accent. Mm -hmm. Both of us, we don't speak the same. Right. So if I pronounce something mm. and it's not, you know, to their sound, mm -hmm. they can repeat it and I will practice and learn. Okay. So we are both learning. So mm -hmm. that's another aspect. Mm -hmm. Also, our color. It depends uh, the, the, uh, the area or the state that you live in. I'm right. talking about myself or mm. in the U.S. here. Mm -hmm. Some states, you mm. know, have a lot of blacks, like right. Bronx. Mm -hmm. It's like your <coughs> home Africa in the U.S. Right. You see most of So you, you don't feel the impact mm -hmm. heavily. Yeah. When our children comes here, they also feel at home. Mm. That's why some people say, why don't you move out from New York? Why don't you move out? But, you know, we, 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 we blend, mm -hmm. we, we adjust easily. Right. The transition helps comparing to living in the other side right. uh, of the states that we have more mm -hmm. of uh, color people, yeah. like, you know, not mm -hmm. black, black per se, mm -hmm. but color people. So these are some of the uh, little bit, I'll say, on the uh, migrating here right. and the shocks that we face. Well, you just you just made something that um, that some of the time that uh, people always um, seem to ignore, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's one of the pro that's uh, one of the many uh, challenges that we have when we come over here. The culture barrier, the language, and they they I think they if as an African living in in the United States, 
the question that every African receives on a daily basis based on where you are mm -hmm. and based on how many people you meet is, where are you from? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the first question. Yeah, you know, and when, whenever somebody says that, they, they're not really trying to know if you're from the Bronx or Brooklyn no. or, you know, uh, or Staten Island or, you know, they want, to, they want you to say Africa. Because they're trying, they're trying to put uh, draw the line between you Enough and them, <clears throat> you know, to for to make them understand that uh, okay, uh, this is this is the way uh, you from and I'm from here. So they want to pull like a barrier in the back of your mind to make you understand that hey, slow down a little bit. So because when, whenever they ask you and you come, even if you made a mistake, you say okay, you know what, somebody like I'm. I'm all the way in Minneapolis or in, in Houston, and somebody asks me, come across to me and say, hey, man, where are you from? And I say, New York. Uh, okay. Um, I know. Oh, originally. <laughs> originally. So um, then they're trying to uh, put a, a, a demarcation between you and them so you can tell them that you're not from here. So at least the conversation will go on, and then they have... They will try to see do you in a way that you can be, you can feel like a little bit uncomfortable about about yourself. That's one thing. And another thing again that I, you, you just said that many people will not go that far. For example, to tell people, hey, the way you sound, you also have an accent. It's it's where you are. It's like it's like living in Brooklyn, living in the Bronx. Everybody you know, has everybody have an accent based on where you are, based mm -hmm. on how you talk. And when once you start translating that into uh, English, then you you have that accent. That's why mm -hmm. when a Spanish person speak, you know exactly that is Spanish because mm -hmm. of the way they talk. And somebody who haven't mixed any other language with their language except English. If, if that if they're talking, that's why when you go in a deep stuff, they sound some kind of way funny. Yeah. Yeah. But because because they haven't made any kind of language with their language, they don't they don't want to hear Spanish. They don't want to hear other languages. All they want to hear is English. So eventually, they're gonna sound that way, you know. But uh, <clears throat> as a as, like one thing we just talked about, you know, I'm saying let's go to the generation uh, part. You know, being a first generation. You know, we will have most of our kids that go to school, and uh, those they go to school with, we also try to use the same uh, um, uh, traumatic kids, words yeah. on them, try to make them feel less of themselves, and not every case will be able to get out of that bubbles. So, how do kids? How do we help? Uh, because we're gonna keep migrating to this place. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's just life. Yeah. Migration been existing for a long time. People been migrating from mm -hmm. one part of the world to another part of the world. Uh, it just happened in our time now. But then people that, that are going to be coming later, all those first generation that are here, you don't have to be kids to go to high school. Some, some will come and grow up, they don't even have time to go to uh, the high school, mm -hmm. but they mingle with society. So how do, we, how do we go above that, you know, and be able to cope with the society and not being offended because I think one of our problem is how we take things sometimes to the extreme to the extent that you know <laughs> uh, it's not yeah. that taking that extreme I'll take right. it from here mm -hmm. uh, like you said especially mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you are a grown-up yeah mm -hmm. uh, you'll be able to manage some some people who you know it's not like they're asking you to learn right but it's a form of bullying. Very good. You know, to, to put you down. Mm -hmm. It's like you're from Africa. Mm -hmm. And some people doesn't know. They thought Africa is just a one ball. We are all in the, like, in the country. Mm -hmm. But they doesn't know that Africa is a continent. Right. And Africa, we don't live in the trees. Right. We don't live in the jungle. I tell mm -hmm. people that actually, if uh, we are talking about uh, animals and stuff, I came to Bronx Zoo. That's where I saw all these lions and stuff. Nothing like that right. where I come from in, in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So in terms of children, when the children come over here, mm. it's a burden and it's a challenge for us parents to let our children understand that these are some of the challenges you are going to face mm -hmm. when you go to school. They will talk about your accents. They will talk about your color. Mm -hmm. They will talk about how you dress. Like I said, that's the crisis. Mm -hmm. 
because all this they dress different mm -hmm. some of them wear the name brand you know right. uh, then you wearing you know your mom managing mm -hmm. to just dress you as yeah. as our culture demands that right. we, we don't focus too much on material stuff mm -hmm. we, we, we focus your growth mm -hmm. to be a better person to understand and balance the culture so when it comes to that, when it comes to that, when the children go to school, it becomes like a bully. And when it comes like a bully, some of the children or our children, they don't want to go to school. They doesn't want to go to school. They get tight because they call them names. And sometimes the children get to jump on them. You know, it, 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 it's so sad. For an example, when I brought my children over here, and I know what is in the grounds, and I have heard some of the challenges that the children go through when they go to school. So I know all parents. Hold on, hold on. Uh, go ahead. Catholic school is manageable. And uh, sorry, you was we went. I had to fix something mm -hmm. very quick, and um, it was mute. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, I have to step back. Right. What I, I, I was saying before that that when the children come over here, right, the same thing that we go through, mm -hmm. they went through. But in this case, we are adults, so we are able to manage it. Right. But. In my experience, when I brought my children over here, because I have heard the stories mm -hmm. that other children are like, they bully them, they call them names, they jump on them, you know, they tease them, they make them miserable. Right. Sometimes they, children doesn't even want to step in the school anymore. So in my case, I really sacrifice and send them to the Catholic school right. for them to adjust, right. to understand, because it's a small environment right. and everything they wear uniform mm -hmm. that is where i like schools that wear uniform yeah. so there's no comparison that i'm wearing high class you are wearing, low, are class. wearing low class we are all in uniform i uh, believe oh, i'm wearing jordan you wearing different thank thing. you in other schools you are everybody wear black shoes thank you so that's why i believe in uniform school right and some people, parents say, oh, no, they have to dress the way they want. Mm -hmm. This is our culture. Where right. we come from, you wear uniform. Everybody's equal. Mm -hmm. There's no rich, poor, or, you know, anybody. Right. So um, when I did that, even there, there was a little bit challenge, mm -hmm. but it wasn't bad like the other. I was at a public school right. because my neighbor mm -hmm. also brought, you know, they brought their children mm -hmm. and they sent them to a public school. Right. And let me tell you, sometimes the child will come with bruises on the face right. because they jump them at the corner. So uh, it depends on the family if they are willing to adjust it mm. or they stay on top. And you know, like you said, we came here for greener pastures. Right. We are focused on our work, 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 work. Mm -hmm. So you are not there to make sure that once the school is over and they get out from the classroom, right. You are standing right there to walk them home. No. We are not there. Yeah. So if they are coming and sometimes they don't hear the language because of the accent. Right. So we throw them in and they have to survive. Yeah. They face the challenges. And if you don't take care, it affects their education. Sometimes yeah. even uh, the teacher, whatever the teacher is teaching in the class, they don't understand. Right. So they'll be failing. Right. That's also the crisis. Mm -hmm. Then the teacher will say, oh, your, your, your daughter or your son is it, it's not, not listening, no, it's not listening mm. because they don't understand. Right. And uh, I, I hope that they will do something more mm -hmm. in regards of the translation mm -hmm. to graduate. You know, they have a small class and they ask for volunteers to come in and interpret the uh, 
the English mm -hmm. to our accent because although I have been here for years, mm -hmm. I still have the African accent. Right. And I'll understand and I'll be able to translate it for them that this is what the teacher said. Or I'll be able to explain, mm -hmm. you know, if the mathematics or, you know, comprehension, I'll be able to explain it in my language. So when they read it, they'll understand. But remember too, because technology plays a role and people want to, you know, mimic the way we are here. Mm -hmm. Remember now, Africa, the parents are also not speaking the native tongue. Right. They're speaking English with the people so in case mm -hmm. by the grace of god mm -hmm. they're able to migrate they will be able to blend in and it's also affecting us losing our identity back home in africa hmm. so that mean uh it, it start it started from africa and then make your way over here mm -hmm. to the to the to this land um that's a very 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 um uh key point that I, that I, it, it kind of, it was a blind spot I'm looking at, but I think what you say, because now one thing you just said, information technology, that's why I said from the beginning, right? It is playing a major role. Things used to happen here first, no, but it would take a uh, year, century no idea, no before, idea. before it go across to, uh, to Africa. Mm -hmm. So that way people that were here first or people that were doing things here first, nobody know what they were doing. Nobody know what they were going through. So that means it has negative and positive. The, the negative part is like, it's easy to be transferred. You don't have to wait for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Even what we're doing right now, look at what we're doing right now. We are live right now in Africa, in, in every Everywhere. part of, of the world. So that means this is information technology that is make, that at its best, mm -hmm. that is reaching out to people at, the, at a, in, a, in a second right. of a time, thing happening. Mm -hmm. So. Like you say, you know, going going deep into into that, and uh, for me especially that you just said, you know, not everybody will be able to afford, or uh, because even sending your children to Catholic school is not because you you are richer than the other no. person. It's just that you you sell something and you couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. You say, you know what, I can't do this. I rather I rather just uh, sacrifice that. That time that I had that I don't money. want to go to the school yeah. and start something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you right because at the end of it, I remember when my when my when my daughter came uh, a couple of years ago, and then um, she was going to this public school. So every day there was a complaint. Every day, if in my father they would even walk after her, like after school, they would they would walk behind mm -hmm. her. And, and they want to know where she's going, and they want to know what she's doing, calling and names. they will be calling her names, you know, calling her names in different, different way until one, you know, every time she comes when she's sad, you know, so, and then I'm like, what's going on? And she explained to me. So, like, what you just said, you know, because I know I don't want to go there and be fighting. So what I used to do is, like, I mean, it was literally, like, a couple of blocks from my house, but I would go there and pick her up and take her home. You know, and sometimes when they see me coming, they will turn around and, mm -hmm. and walk away. That's correct. So imagine, imagine somebody that came from a from a society where they think they're gonna be living in uh, living the best life. Because when you're in Africa, all you think about is like I'm going to the the Western world where everything is like easy, smooth, and going. So when you come over here, you already establish that thinking, that mindset. And the, the thing about it, when you get over here, all you're going to have to see is different reality. People are mocking you for how you speak. And you just say your accent. And accent is literally uh, your culture. Everybody has an accent. It's literally who you are. Because the accent is just, is just uh, telling you. If you, like you from Ghana, the moment you start talking, people know exactly she's from Ghana mm -hmm. because of the accent. So it, it just, that's who you are, that's your identity. And somebody else wants you to lose that or bully you for that so that you can feel uncomfortable whenever you're talking to them. So, uh, like I say, uh, the discussion is going on, and today's topic, we are talking about identity crisis in the West. How can we overcome it? You know, so basically, stay tuned. We're going to go through a very quick little break, and once we come back, we will... Um, 
once we come back, we will continue our discussions. So Abdel Rahim here with me today is Katrin Kojo, aka Ki Mama. Uh, many of you, if this is your first time seeing her, wash your face. And she also have a, a big charity organization that we're going to talk about later. So um, today we are talking about identity crisis in our African setting. How can we overcome it? How should we approach uh, when, when, we, when we have to face those kind of uh, um, like uh, bullying in and from anybody, it could be from your friend, somebody who you call your friend that you work together with, or uh, maybe you go to school with, or uh, sometimes just your Facebook friends. And people are now using social media or information technology to go beyond uh, whatever we're talking right now. So basically, how can we approach it, and how why should we approach it? Because the money, most of the time. The way we approach it as African is to say, why are you saying that to me? Why are you doing this for me? And, uh, you know, ignorance is something that um, 
that you can't just pull out of somebody. You gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta teach them to. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure that if they don't understand from their angle, you should understand it. Right. Because I feel like most of the time we don't, we don't stand in that position where we can say, you know what, um, he doesn't know where I'm from, so he been the they whatever he, where he get information. This is how mm -hmm. it, this is the impression he get towards me, or this is the impression he get towards me. So, how do we, how do we, in that in that position, how do we fit ourselves without getting angry, and also be in a place where we can people that uh, away from all can understand that this is not about uh, us getting upset, but we should be able to fix it in a way that you know that educate them. So. How, what can we do? <laughs> it's not easy, yeah. but it's doable. Right. Um, like I said, uh. in my experience, so I'll use my experience because that's what I know. Right. Um, when people said, oh, wow, you're from Africa? Mm. I said, yes, I am from Africa. I'm from Ghana. Right. Because Africa is a continent. Mm -hmm. In a way, I am educating them. I don't want to assume that they are teasing me, but I'm aware, or like in a way, making fun of me. Let me use that language. Right. But I also use that channel to give them some education. Then I'll ask, have you been to Africa before? Mm -hmm. Or have you been to Ghana before? Right. They said, oh, no. Oh, how is Ghana? Mm -hmm. Then I will start to educate them. They say, wow, I don't know. And they'll ask, oh, do you have trees and you have big buildings and you have cars mm -hmm. like here? I say, of course, it's like here. That's the difference. The difference between here mm -hmm. and where I come from is because I'm here to make some greens. Right. Because I'm going to state it here on Afro TV. Mm. If not because our, some of our African leaders have disappointed us. Mm -hmm. Africa, we are blessed. We have everything. Right. But because the management is poor, mm -hmm. we are here to make a greener passage. So in, in, in a way, you just have to calm yourself, right. count uh, three and just breathe in and out, mm -hmm. and educate them. Because sometimes we don't also study and also know that this person that is talking to you also come from somewhere. Remember, especially us in the United States, we are all immigrants. Right. Either second generation, first generation, we all come from somewhere. But they forgot that, that they are not, you know, the indigenous of America. Mm -hmm. They are also immigrants. So you also have to refer them that you're also an immigrant, right? right. Where does your parents come from? Mm -hmm. Some of them even never visit home. Mm -hmm. Most African of us, we are blessed. Mm -hmm. Some of us go home twice in a year. We go home. We still maintain our heritage. So that is the reason why most of times when I'm going to events, I like to dress in the African attire. And they say, oh, wow, that's beautiful. I say, yeah, this is how we dress. This is our queen. This is the beach. This is, the, this is all the crisis for you to, you know, control and calm it down and teach them. Because you are not trying to just adapt the westernized, just wearing the pants. You see, I am blending it. Right. So I have the combination. Mm. Sometimes when you travel and mm. you work with somebody, you buy some of the, your or the Agbada or Bubu mm -hmm. and say, this is a present, let's go to an event. Right. And once, trust me, once they get hooked up, mm -hmm. they are more African than you. Because now they understand that, wow. So you don't have to take it, you know, too personal. Maybe my background mm -hmm. of uh, being a recreational therapist and right. dealing with different, uh, you know, psych, mm -hmm. how people behave and stuff, mm -hmm. that maybe that's the reason why I have that, you know, uh, empathy and understanding of how they think. Because uh, let me tell you how I make it. Don't take it mm -hmm. personal. Mm -hmm. When you work in a, um, in a hospital or a nursing home, mm -hmm. there are different personalities. So sometimes I say it in my head, I say, this patient, I will diagnose the person in my head. Okay. Because you can't take anything personal right. when someone tells you, hey, mm -hmm. then you get upset. 
at one point somebody called me a monkey. Okay. I said, oh yeah, if you are in Africa, you know, you won't be sitting here by now. I'm also being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he kind of get uptight. And I said, you see, you're being upset. I didn't even call you any, you know, animal or anything, but you call me a monkey. But I tell you, if you're in Africa, you will not be able to survive. So in a way, then I said, you don't speak like that. You need me to care for you. How can you call me a monkey? Because animals... Uh, monkeys live in the jungle. So that means you're welcome. You are part of me. Mm -hmm. So if you're insulting me and I'm caring for you, what do you think will end up? So you don't do that. So it, like I said, it is not easy. But that's why we are here on Afro TV to talk about it and to tell people that, yes, you come in the pool, you come in the land that you don't know anyone. You are not going to have... There's going to be a hurdles, right. but it's up to you mm -hmm. to find a ways to assimilate and to adjust because your children, like I said, mm -hmm. your children will also come. So your experience, you will transfer and guide them through it. So when my children came here and they went to school and they said, oh, ma, look at my hair. They're talking about my hair. It's kinky. I need to pull some... Uh, some cream to make it. I said, look at my hair. And look at the people who did their hair. Some of them lose their hair. Just be proud of who you are. Just let them stand out and say, yes, I am a proud African. I am a proud Ghanaian. I'm a proud Guinea. Once they know that you are proud of your identity, they begin to respect you. But if you give up, that is where they take advantage of you. So once I guide them, and also I'm going to add this to it. Mm -hmm. When we don't address it at home, mm -hmm. because the parents, we are busy, we are well, we don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. That is where some of our children, now that they try to be tough, so there are somebody in the school or in the community who is tough, and they'll say, hey, come join me. Right. Come join me and let's right. fight these people. Right. Now, you see, your child have a wrong group of people giving him or her advice. And before you know, your child is out of hand. You can't control it. You'll be chasing the green, but your home is messed up. So it, it, it's a challenge. You have to be able to learn how to balance it. Mm -hmm. It is not easy. It's a fight, especially in some communities. Look at nowadays you will see our own African children fighting among each other. Killing each other. I don't Actually, even want to mm -hmm. go to that extreme, but yeah, you see? They do. But we are supposed to bind together. Right. So the parents, we have responsibility. This is all started, it's a crisis. Right. It's a crisis and identity and try to stand in on their grounds that I'm tough, you can't mess with me. So now they take it to a different level. This is time that we parents, we have to stand up. I always say that mm. no matter what you do, right. you are not older than me. I'm still your mother or you know, your father is your father. And I still have to advise you because you are an ambassador to me. Right. If you step out as my child, they say, key mama child is going away. My tag is on you. So if you are going to be... Uh, Ha carry my tag along, mm -hmm. then you have to behave. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Sometimes you see your children acting certain way on social media. Mm -hmm. Now social media has become their life. Right. Everything they put it on, and sometimes you see and you put your head down. But you are not going to give up. You call and say, hey, son, this is what you do now. It is not right. You still have to... Uh, Try to nurture and channel them until, unless because social uh, media or the technology, it can make you good or it can destroy you. Wow. <clears throat> Something you just said right now that, I, that I'm going to add to that is that when you said about, you know, because our leader have disappointed us, so this is the reason why people always, you know, um, maybe kind of abuse most African that come over here 
and we have everything home. And I, I don't think it's about we having everything home. You can still have everything home, and then you still got to, that's why the war is a big place. Mm -hmm. You know, some things you might have, some things you don't have. So even with the, if you, America, let's say those that think that they have, American might think that, okay, we have everything home. But do you know how many Americans are out there that don't live in the United States? Yeah. That was uh, born and raised here. But the moment they, 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 they go outside of America, they, they experience life, they be like, no, I've been wasting time all this That's time. That's why I tell you that we have everything okay. in Africa. I've been, I've been so it, it's, not about, it's not about having everything. It's all about, you know, sometimes migration is just, it's just a thing that people move from one place to another. So that you can uh, move, make better life out of uh, out of out of uh, some place, some foreign places. Sometimes you know you might not the land might not be okay for you. And most of the time, people that migrate from one place to another, they don't do it because uh, they're trying to move there permanently. Some people just want to go and try and see how things work. Yeah, and if once, I want to come in mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. if I said African have everything, yes, we do, and I will not change my mind. Right. But because we don't know what's ahead of us, mm -hmm. we think what we have, mm -hmm. we have nothing and something better than what we have. So we are chasing it. Yeah. Until you get there and you know that, mm, And one thing, and one I, thing I want to say to that, right? <laughs> Do you know that you and I right now, whatever we're saying right now is a direct experience and we're trying to reach out to our people, right? Mm -hmm. But um, because the fact that this whole world has been uh, transformed in a way that whatever that, that you and I would discuss on our real platform is, is not going to be relevant until this person that um, does not know anything about us but is saying things to, to bring us down. They rather, you know, choose that platform or encourage, like CNN will talk about everything they want to talk about right now. Mm -hmm. But you and myself, if we start talking about how we feel, people will be like, oh, it's not that important. But we are the one that's supposed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, like one, one example you just said, being sarcastic about a uh, situation, you just use them. I had a friend one time when I used to work at a place, um, on Astor Place, somewhere in, uh, in Manhattan when I first came. So... There was this uh, Spanish brother, I don't know where, maybe Ecuador or somewhere he's from. So they were arguing, and we used to joke, you know what I mean? Like, they were very friendly people. So they came out arguing, and they used to call me in Africa, you know? So I was like, okay, if you call me Africa, that's cool. I mean, yeah, if you call me in Africa, you're more welcome to call me that. So they come, Africa, Africa, they came running to me, and then the other friend asked me that they've been arguing, about somebody told him something that in Africa people sleep on the tree or in the tree you know what I mean so I'm like come on man that's something that we learn until we were baby mm -hmm. we learned that you gotta learn how to sleep in the tree you gotta learn how to hang in there for like for like for like a year before before you become strong but the thing here about that is like it, it go by, 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 by rank if you if you become more wealthy you go on top of the tree. So, for example, uh, if if an American president go to uh, Africa, we take him all the way on top of the biggest tree. So he's like, "No, that's not true, man." He says, "He's oh, gonna be sarcastic." You haven't been to Africa. How do you know that's not true? true. That's how. That's how. That's how we accommodate <laughs> our guests because we think that's that's our way. He said, "No, that's not true." I said, "Okay, that's not true." He said, "Yeah, you sure?" No, nah, that's can't happen, man. So what make you think that's not true? He said, because how can somebody from America go in the tree? I said, mm -hmm. that's how we live over there. <laughs> so he like, you know what, you, you crazy, man. <laughs> yes, so the conversation yes. end right there because I make you understand that he, first of all, he haven't been to Africa. And those that are telling him about what's going on in Africa, they know nothing about Africa. They will tell you things that you're supposed to, you want to hear so that you can feel like, okay, oh, I got everything over here. I got all that I want to get. I mm -hmm. got the freedom. I got this. I got that. Just last night, I met a guy, you know, and then he was telling me about, oh, the way America is going, things is going, some kind of way America is the, is the, is the single most free country in the whole world, you know. So he was like, do you agree to that? I'm like, it depends how you define freedom. Mm -hmm. 
That's correct. Yeah, it depends how we define freedom. If freedom is where you, where somebody can take you right now and put you in a neighborhood and you get shot, if you call that freedom, then that's freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, and where I'm from, nobody will shot me because of my color of skin. Mm -hmm. So it depends how you define freedom. If you define it from your perspective or from how they tell you, then maybe it is the most free country in the mm -hmm. world. So he was like, hmm, I mean, you... What do you mean, man? I just told you what I mean. <laughs> That's correct. So it, it, it leave with you now to go and um, digest what I told you, what I probably I'm wrong or you're right, but don't define freedom because wherever you're stuck, that's where somebody else begin. So people just try to bring you down in a sense that so they can have edge over you. So at the end of the day, we have to understand as an African to know that this whole thing that we're doing mm -hmm. is not because of nothing, it's because somebody trying to step on you so they can have an edge over you. That's good. And you cannot, you cannot in no go way be um, yourself except you know who you are. So that's where the question is. If you over there right now, you want to tell her what is identity. What do we, when we talk about identity, what do we mean and what should we be looking for? So, Key Mama, I'm going to turn to you and ask you, when it comes to African identity, what should we be looking for? Oh, like I said, it's a very broad scope. Right. It's religion, mm -hmm. uh, sexual identity, disability. Mm -hmm. So, it, it depends uh, the area that you face. Right. So, uh, mm. When I say identities, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, the way you dress, mm -hmm. your language, mm -hmm. and uh, some, uh, your disability is someone's ability. Right. So it, it, it's, it's a broad scope, and uh, we can't tackle everything today. Mm -hmm. But us immigrants over here, like I said, the, you have to claim your identity, oh. regardless whether it's your accent, the way you wear your hair, right. claim it. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody tell you it, is, it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. As long as it's appropriate and mm -hmm. you like it, you sell it right. Mm -hmm. So don't let anybody talk you down. Right. Because if you don't tell your story, Mm -hmm. Somebody will tell, uh, you know, tell it in their own way. In their own way. And you don't have a choice. Right. So if you have the opportunity, mm -hmm. like I'm sitting here on Afro TV mm -hmm. and I'm preaching, mm -hmm. I claim I'm a proud African. Right. If you said I have accent, so do you. Because it sounds different in my ears. So mine sound different in your ears. Because we are the role model for our children. Like I say, you ca we cannot sit here. Whatever that we are doing here, we are not doing here because of us. We are doing it for the generation that will come. We are paving the way. Right. So we have to claim it. Mm -hmm. If we don't claim it, we are lost. I will never change my identity. Right. I will never go bleach and become white. Right. Because this is me. And I'm proud of what I am. And I can say the same thing to the generation or to the community youth and say, hey, be proud and you're an ambassador for your, fa uh, your family, your mother or your mom who you live in. Don't stress it up. Like I said, the African community, the children now are becoming a handful because of some identity crisis that they went through when they first came here because they're trying to claim their identity and stand on their ground, but they end up in the wrong crowd to teach them that, hey, this is how you're supposed to fight. But we are not supposed to fight with our fists, but we're supposed to fight with our mind. In our strength. Yes, and also educate them. Okay. So it's about time that we have to stand up. Corona year 2020 mm -hmm. has given us room to relax and to and close and sit with our children and to begin to study their behavior right. and how they define themselves. So it's the parents' responsibility to make sure they define and they guide their children. 
Otherwise, somebody will define it for them. And you might not like it. Because they will come back and tell you, Mom, the way you're dressing, no. Yes. You can't come to my house, you know, wearing the headgear and wearing this, no. The identity, you are, they are losing it because you never, you know, encourage them. I'll use that word and include it into the assimilation, the journey that they're going through. Because they see you, mom, that you are not sure even whether you want to claim the African part or you want to adapt. Adaptation is good, but you don't have to throw away your identity. If you are black, you are black. No matter what you do, you are who you are. So you better claim the crisis will be there, but you have to learn how to cope with that crisis. Well, you know, this is this is this is going too deep, and and I think that I, um, this is the kind of conversation we're supposed to be having. It maybe it might be a little uncomfortable, but it's such an interesting way to to move forward to the extent that um, if we don't start talking about it, it's going to eat up us because information technology is here to stay. Mm -hmm. It's even going to, right now we have 5G and then probably soon you're going to have it all to Africa and things are going like Quickly. that. Second. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of believe that, you know, I kind of believe that, you know, we shouldn't just, you know, watch things, you know, like, like work and set out. We got to make sure that we do it ourselves mm -hmm. because if you, if you leave yourself on manual, like you just, you know, doing things manual, then it, it's going to, it's going to be auto and whatever right. you see, that's what's going to happen to you. That's going to be the outcome that's going to mm -hmm. come to you. But you're from Ghana, right? And we've seen that, uh, um, even though we're talking about here in the West, but for the past, uh, let's say, year or two, we've seen a lot of, of black Africans that live in the United States. Have, is, uh, they are making their way back home to Ghana. Year of return. Yeah, of year of return. And we've seen Steve Harvey. We've seen a lot of celebrities going to Ghana. Uh, being from Ghana, what is, how is it like when people that are that are transitioning from here, it's a year of return and they are going to Ghana. How is it like, what is the environment over there? How people are reacting to Ray, you know, the Ghanaians and those that are going. And uh, I even saw you back, I think, I think last year you were mm, there, right? Yeah. So how is it, how, how's the environment like? Um, Ghanaians in general, if mm. I will say, yeah. um, they, they are, they, they're welcoming, they love foreigners. Right. So they will do anything to make you so comfortable mm -hmm. that you would like to stay. Mm -hmm. But when you stay, then now you face the reality okay. that not everything mm -hmm. is yeah. not green. Mm -hmm. But this is what we went through. But if you're going for a short stay, mm -hmm. like they went for a year or mm -hmm. 10, and, mm -hmm. and also remember, mm -hmm. they're on vacation. Right. So they, they've planned, they mm -hmm. make their budgets, mm -hmm. you know, to, to spend and mm -hmm. to have fun and to move around. Right. And some of them also try to acquire property. Right. Because uh, uh, the current president, mm -hmm. Nana Akufuadu, mm -hmm. Akufuadu uh, give them the, uh, you know, the privilege to right. get their citizenship to become, you know, Ghanaians to right. stay and develop. Mm -hmm. It is great to the country. Right. It helps the economy, right. and uh, they get to know that they are home. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm saying. Right. You see, they are generation, generation, generation. So their identity, mm -hmm. lo they lost track of their identity. Right. Now they begin to do the ancestral search right. to find out which part of Africa they mm -hmm. come from. Right. So now they're going back. In Africa, in Ghana, we say Sankofa. They're going back to look for their lineage. Mm -hmm. And we, now, we have the opportunity. And looking at them, we have to learn. That's why we have to continue to teach our children their heritage and also their identity, to hold on to it, to encourage them to visit their motherland. They shouldn't wait 
to generation to generation and they start looking for where they come from because some people like the Americans they don't feel like the Americans here accept them so they have to leave and we don't want that to happen that's the reason why we are here talking about it right your identity wherever you go no matter what mm -hmm. there will be a crisis even among Africans we have crisis yeah because you come from different uh, religion you your beliefs the way you dress but we are blacks Right. But it's up to us to mm -hmm. know what to adopt and how to cope with it and learn and, you know, learn to uh, stay in, in, in a comfortable environment. Respect me and I respect you. And there will be peace. Wow. I, I have, I have um, a couple of, I think, months ago, I have one of my imam who was saying the same thing on the show. He says that, you know, the the importance of of who you are that means your value mm -hmm. and that's your that's your identity mm -hmm. that's why you take your run every day it's like when, when you get pulled over to the first thing the police gonna ask for is your id, ID. so that's your identity and your identity is your <laughs> your parents uh your family your maybe your race your the way you dress your culture mm -hmm. and the way you do the orders compare in you, that's your identity. Mm -hmm. And you meeting somebody back home in Liberia, right? In because I'm from Liberia. Uh, in Liberia, in in our in not maybe in it's hard for you to see people speak their native uh, language. Oh. It's very hard. Right. There are only a few people in. There's only a few tribe that are known for it. And even though they live in the city, but they always speak their language. Uh, and one is a crew. The crew people, I think, they had origin from, oh, from cool. Ghana. Yeah, so mm -hmm. they love, I think, they, they love the crew, they speak it. And then there's another tribe in the called the Basa, uh, the, the Basa people. So they always speak their tribe. There's, there's not a single person that I've ever met from Liberia in the Basa. They don't speak their, 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 their tribe, mm -hmm. uh, uh, their language. And a crew, they also speak their language too, perfect, perfectly. And uh, apart from that, every other people, like, they always want you guys to speak English. So once you start talking in your language, uh, when we were growing up, they would say, oh, you let to speak your language too much. But I come to realize that because they don't speak their language, so they will always try to make Draw you not you. speak it, mm -hmm. you know. So when you grow up with it, kind of, even now, a couple of years ago when I was back home in Africa, and then um, I'm speaking my language, right, with people, family members, and then, then some friend will ask me, hey, I thought you from America, man. Why are you not speaking uh, like American? Mm -hmm. And then I told him, I'm in America, right? I struggle so they can understand what I'm saying. What am I supposed to come <laughs> home and also struggle. struggle for you to understand me? So what's, what am I trying to prove? They're being westernized. Very good. So right there back home in Africa, we've lost our identity trying to be like uh, the Westerner. Mm -hmm. And I think information technology is playing a major role in that. Yeah. So for that reason, if we, if we don't try right now to press ourselves to do things that will make us come back to ourselves, we will eventually uh, mm -hmm. kind of, one day we're in America, we say we're going back to, uh, return back to Africa, and we're not going to have nothing over there. No. Because the world is moving faster. Mm -hmm. And what, when it's moving faster, if you can't be yourself now, you're not going to be yourself tomorrow. Never. So it's, it's a thing that you, you lost off. And once you lost it, you don't, it's hard to, to, to get back. We're going to go to a quick musical break. When we come back, we will continue our discussion. I'm here with uh, Key Mama. When we come back, we won't talk about your, the beautiful work you're doing. That is your charity. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's, 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 a, it's a phenomenal work that you're doing, and uh, we have seen you doing a lot of progress back home and here with mm. the children. So let's talk about that a little bit. And those are all trying to put information into the kids mm. and make them understand who they yeah. are. So we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, uh, we will uh, continue our show. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Gele 
acabamento Okay, welcome back once again. This is the Afro TV, and I'm your host, Abdel Rahim, right here live from New York City. Uh, here with me today is our the Queen Mother, man. This is our key mama. And before we went to the break, we were our today discussion. We are actually talking about identity crisis. Identity crisis is something that is uh, have made a way a deep you know, root in our in our existence today. It's been here for a while, but now we have a new uh, post, which is uh, globalization and also information technology. They are playing a major role, you know, in identity crisis. And now you don't even you don't even if you say today you want to stay home, somebody is gonna probably bully you online. But um, because of what you don't know who you are. You don't. You have leave your your identity behind, and you're walking away uh, with nothing. So when somebody throw a little thing at you, you're gonna feel offended. Uh, so now the question of the day that we have to discuss today, we don't. We might not have all the answers to to the many questions, but it's a discussion that we having uh, a panel discussion with uh, with my guest. Um, we have and we've said so many important things today that I have learned from, and I also and I hope you guys also have learned from it. 
And uh, today, before we go on away, we want all of you guys to know that this is a, it's a discussion that is based on our own experience about how we've been living here. She's been here for a little while. I've been here for a little while. Over decades, we've been here. So we know exactly what we're talking about. And in the best way that we all can be able to move this community forward, which is the diaspora community, that's 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 how we can do it it's like talking about those things in a very you know like not script away you know we just saying it from our mind and tell people exactly what they should expect if they have to see themselves on this side of the world because migration will not stop it will continue to happen even if you can build like all luxury uh, houses in every part of africa you know people will still migrate and come over here and sometimes migrating for it for even in that light is, is even better than coming on vacation we also have to understand the life out here you know so if i want you to break i was telling you guys about catering you have a charity organization and we're going to talk about that um i know i've seen it i've read you know you send me some some links and i've read about it uh, at what point? Because I've been knowing you for a while. At what, at what point? Because you, you are people person. You always <laughs> want to help. But uh, at what point did Catherine decide to say, listen, this is uh, something that I've been doing with people, but I want to now um, transform it into the, this organization that can be able to help people. At what point did that kick in? And, um, and what is it really <laughs> about? Okay, thank you very much right. uh, and uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about the Key Mama Foundation. Right. Key Mama Foundation was founded in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, why did I start Key Mama Foundation? I observed that because it started from here uh, in the U.S. and I observed that every year we have so many activities in the community and it's focus on only the adults right even when we take the children to the park mm -hmm. we left them hanging and we, we also found a, we <laughs> find a little place that got uh, children playing with yes playing. and uh, but so I figure I said no mm -hmm. we work we work so hard we leave them home we come sometimes we then we even see them an hour or two hours a day we gotta go All right so why not pick a day in june whereby it's also a children's day it's a global children's month also it's a father's around father's day mm -hmm. and have a day for the children and observe them in a free environment because remember we are in close we're always in, in a home so you don't know how your children play with other children that have different identity and right. different behavior. So we put them in a free range. We say, come have time, sit down with them, talk to them. How many people, our African people, take out their children to the park and sit down and let the children play around? They don't have time. By the time you get home, you are crushed. So... Thinking about that, I say, you know what? Let me have this Children's Day. It hasn't been easy. Oh, you know, the parents still works, but it's growing every year. It's growing every year. Here, people might think that, hey, we are in America, so we are not in need. Let me tell you, a lot of us, a lot of people are suffering in silence. They need help. Not that they need help. The help is there, but they don't know how to get the help. All right. So that is where I also found this that hey, let's make me let's I'll make myself available to be the resource that when someone needs something they can call us. Maybe you need food for your child, mm -hmm. you need this, or you need to fill some application. You know, you, just to lead you so you, you don't be overwhelmed and stressed out. So when I go to Ghana too,
sometimes a child is so brilliant, mm -hmm. but their family don't have the funds to continue the education. So that is where I will come in, or our organization will come in, and will solicit for funds. For, I will call you, I'll call somebody, say, they, you know, hey, let's help this guy get ahead. Then I'll start calling friends, doing some GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. They have a school building. Mm -hmm. Maybe the school, they have a building. They don't have a chest. That's why I said some of our African uh, Ghana leaders have disappointed us. And uh, the government cannot do everything. So individuals, we also have to step in. Sometimes when we st start something, then they realize, this is there. Let mm -hmm. me go help. Right. Then we call, we brought the attention to mm -hmm. it that this person or this area needs your assistance. The leader over there, please step in to help. Maybe you see some child struggling. Maybe they need a wheelchair to school to be able to learn. That's where we'll come in and we will solicit or we will find a resource to help to help that person. So the Kimama Foundation is there to help anyone that needs help or needs information or to get resources wherever that you are. Somebody will call me, okay, mama, I know somebody who is struggling. How can we help? It's not that I'm comfortable or I'm rich, but I can assist to get help to ease that person. It might not be 100% help, but at least at that point, you'll be able to save a life because maybe that point, the person's life is hanging because I have tasted before. I know how hard it is for you to be in a tight corner and you feel like you hit the wall that there's, there is no breakthrough. But so in, a, in a, your own small way, whatever you can help, you don't have to be a billionaire. If you have uh, $5 and you can give someone a dollar, it's a blessing. That time you have saved that person's life. So that's what Key Mama stands for. Just to be there and to be the voice for the voiceless. So that's, so we keep going on. So I hope that uh, this uh, crisis 2020 uncertainty, we don't know what is going on, what is going to be in the next year. But in a way like this year, we have it, um, uh, via social media, you know, the Zoom events, and it was great. We have all the parents to come on to talk about, you know, their children and everything. So it's going on in one day at a time. Since you are here and the whole squad, I know that uh, you will join, and you can also go online. It's www.thekeymamafoundation.org. Whatever that you have to support us, donate. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, cash, you can send it to us. Uh, we have a PayPal. And uh, if you have pre-used clothing, uh, shoes, uh, non-perishable food, we will take it and uh, we ship it. And we take it to the villages and give it to them. Because sometimes you hear... Every year we try to change, you know, our clothes. Sometimes they, your stuff will be in the bag. You never wear it. So that's what. And we give it to those in need. And I'm not only looking to focus only in Ghana, but as time comes up, we'll go to the other African countries and also um, <coughs> collaborate because there are organizations on the ground we don't do solo too. Kimama Foundation doesn't stand. We go, any organization that is there, we collaborate with them and uh, we help. So that's it. Wow. <clears throat> you, just, you just made um, one of the points that I always talk about, even our organization that we have over here. Whenever we, we, we try to do something, we always focus, about, we focus on ourselves. We... We forget the key puzzle, what is the, the kids, you know? They are the ones that are 
that are in the midst of they and they did not call for it. We I think we are the one that put them into it. Remember us going back home, we had place to play. We would go mm -hmm. out all day and come in, you know, in the afternoon or maybe sometime they gotta go and look for us in mm -hmm. the neighborhood house. So imagine imagine our kids growing up or he or she ever play with it's a TV. Oh home. yeah. You know? Isolation. Yeah, that's absolutely so that means you have that case have grown up to know one thing, TV, iPad, TV, mm -hmm. and iPad. So if that person is not socializing, or if that person is getting all that information from, 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 that, from that TV, and do you know what is it for them? Do you know what you put into them? So by coming up with an organization that can focus on children to be able to move outside of their, their little bags and do things outside, even here in America, it's a plus, and it's a, that's why I just put the 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 the, the web the uh, link up there. Just go to www.thekeymamafoundation.com. Right? Dot org. Org. Oh, okay. Let me let me face that. Yeah. Uh, www.thekeymamafoundation.org. And yeah. also another important. Start to know each other mm. when they are young. Mm. It also help the community mm. because if you know someone, it's very hard to hurt somebody. Right. So they know each other regardless of your religion identity. Colors. Mm -hmm. Children are children. Children right. see no boundary. Mm -hmm. So once they start growing up, they become body body in the community, and it helps the community grow and it reduce crime. Because if we all know we live in the global village, and I know that, hey, this is uh, Abdul children, and this is Kimama children, this is Siddiqui children, they become family. But I might walk and I don't even know your daughter. Then later on, something might happen. I say, and you oh can't my know gosh. you can't know them if you, if we don't come together, together. In, in a place where Thank we can you. also meet. And I think one of the problems that we also have to, <clears throat> even though uh, it's it's not that kind of big problem, but uh, it is is a challenge to, you know, we we always you know the border. I, I was our our little our border that we have that was drawn by the um, the, the the colonists. Or those are called lines when they were living, they just draw the little map and say, This is Ghana, <laughs> the, Coast, yeah, of and put the little the invisible, between. yeah, <laughs> borders. And in real life, I know it, it have been, uh, they have named us, called our name based on where we're from. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that should be something that we should take, 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 it, uh, take it, um, to a certain extent. You know, that, that line there is, is like you live in New York and you have a border between you guys. You know, the water is there, but once you're in Jersey, you stay in America. So <clears throat> no matter where you go, no matter if you're in Africa, if whatever the case is, we got to make look at that, that boundary to be invisible. Just look at it as a name that was given to us, not because we wanted it. But it's but, how they mm -hmm, wanted it. That they wanted it. So... Uh, it's already there, but we also got to, you know, look at it from the perspective that uh, that we can make a change. Because you can, I can be uh, helping or trying to help your organization if I think that, oh, she's different. She's from Ghana. I'm from <laughs> Liberia. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to help her because she's from Ghana. Because we always have that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. And just by me saying it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It really, really do exist. And many of you guys know very well that those things exist. So, and um, those are just, you know, like once again, hiding our identity. Because you feel like, and what then between, different between a kid, my mama, and Abdul? You know, if if she don't say she's from Ghana or... Once they see you on the street, they're gonna say, "Oh, African." That's it. So, so <clears throat> I think I think we should put away those differences, and I believe that we we are our own. We are the one that's supposed to help ourselves. So, no matter what, no matter what goes, <clears throat> no matter what goes, we gotta understand that. Oh, whatever the case is, we have to make sure that we love one another, and be there for one another, and take away those invisible boundaries that make you say your, your country or your region or whatever it is 
once we go beyond that we will be able to be um in a progressive way that can mm -hmm. help our entire community well so once again um if you just join in please this is the afro tv um this is our new uh how you call it um our new uh schedule we are here wednesday 6 p.m uh in studio and friday we have our religious topic we meet and then we talk about variety of, of issues that happen in our community so let's let me go to a quick musical break when we come back we will we will continue our show again and then uh we're gonna start where we are and then begin from there next wednesday so stay tuned for this quick musical break when we come back we'll continue Caragua aquí mira el de dinastía sabroso Canon no dipica pula de la dura mena Caname BBC la combo o foca chana Capoli Cataluña para mí que fin de seila la televisión plala camu yo trata sola Suni tele mogu fala nyame fala tele jaga tamina ni na we drunya mala kene go bebe la lo bisru we tatu akogo lo ni ba u dala fa wa yi maku Me fa we sika, ya do sunga lo inaka. Go come na to mon bro da kuma na na me musiaka. Toka tu dola, go mo mo ma bo jona. Yangro to mi na we do nya mi na karatala. Toka na wa si, the post to get ready. Go mo mo si ni do bona na me ka kula crazy. He na kenny wa apini ana ana steady. Tu abu ya ma kai da bari de cha, bala le moneni. I wait there for jangro lo ka ke mo ka go tu me ni femini pa da ma de de na da na wo le meni. Luminari, alu luminari, mi de kena ya ve katruña tiñe mo ma fanati. Ay e pela, ay mo la trongo palo, y vi pa en anti sola y quince ya da ve caballo. Eh, pa la vela, pa ca ñaka a la forma se va tuñe, a ve ca sin la te ca fo ni soma. Cara ne ñonde, doni kain, ay ca na pe se go ca na me go ca ida na timi. Truña we ñami, go be we ñami, truña we ñami, quien te fo de we ti cori. Truña we ñami. Welcome back. Uh, once again, my name is Abdel Rahim, and uh, the 
I'm gonna keep this this uh, for foundation right here because mm -hmm. it's 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 really really uh, meaningful foundation. So we want every one of you guys to help. Uh, you can donate at www.keymamafoundation.org. You can always um, that's the only way to reach out to you. Yeah, the Key Mama Foundation is mm. big. Mm. T H not just the you have to put. No, I have to be there. There, okay, T -H -E. okay. So let me let me fix that mm -hmm. quick. Uh, sorry. And sorry. also, they can call me on. Mm. Uh, let me give my general uh, number. You see, we have so many numbers that uh, <laughs> it's hard yeah. to keep up uh, with the other numbers. So the Key Mama Foundation. Yes. Dot org. Okay. The number that they can call is nine two nine. Two four zero two one four nine. I'll repeat again nine two nine two four zero two one four nine. Or they can inbox me, Key Mama Show, on uh, Messenger, um, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. I even forget to mention that you also have a live podcast that she mm -hmm. do too. Uh, um, in Ghana and here, she do it in Twi. I love it. You know, she's she's one of my inspirations. She she have a live podcast that she do, so you can also follow her on Key Mama in Show. Sure. Right? Key Mama yeah. Show is on uh, every social media, and in, and also she have a podcast that do that too. So she just gave you a number. She gave you her her um her uh, website that you can visit mm -hmm. the Key Mama um uh, Foundation Foundation dot org.